welcome to the Million Pound Mission Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Shibley, the PhD, the previously heavy dude, and I'm on a one million pound mission. Now, I've personally lost over 100 pounds, and I've applied what I've learned from my own transformation journey to help my hometown clients lose over 35,000 pounds in just five years. Now I'm on a mission to produce over 1 million pounds of results by delivering my best weekly tips, motivation, inspirational stories, and transformation strategies so that you can gain clarity about what you need to do to reach your goals and give you the confidence to take action. And the perfect time to start taking action is right now. So let's do this. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of the Million Pound Mission Podcast. It's your buddy, Adam, the PhD, the previously heavy dude, and this is episode number 181, Escaping the Black Hole of Fitness Doom. Ooh, I made it sound dramatic there, right? Uh, so this is a topic that I feel like is super important. I, I refer to it quite a bit as I live stream and as I podcast and I, I get interviewed on in other shows, but I realize that... I haven't done a focused podcast on this in like 170 episodes, so it's about time to dial in on this, and uh, just so that you know, I'm going to give you all kinds of, of strategies, we're going to paint this picture clear as day, uh, after the show, when you hear the music playing, hang in there, because I'm going to tell you about my brand new transformation reboot program, I feel like this is one of the best ways to escape the black hole of fitness doom, I take all the components that I'm going to talk about today, and uh, ball them up into one awesome package, and I'm launching some test groups here in September. So stay tuned after the official show for the after party. And after the party, it's the after after party, as my friend R. Kelly says. Uh, so stay tuned for that when the music plays, and I'll hook you up with that info. So the black hole of fitness doom. The thing that really makes me sad is that like. 90% of people out there trying to lose weight, trying to transform their body, trying to exercise, trying to eat better, they get trapped in this and they just assume this is the deal. This is the transformation story. This is normal. And I'm here to tell you that it's not. It is absolutely not. So I'm going to paint this picture today and I'm going to show you what it looks like, where you most likely are, and how to get the hell out of there. All right, so get fired up. If you're somebody that has just continuously lost weight, regained, you know, got some momentum going and then lost that momentum, you know, the holiday season hits, you pack it on. We're going to show you how to escape that. I call that the black hole of fitness doom. Uh, so the first thing I want to give you a visual. As you guys know, I like to help you visualize where you're at. That's where a lot of the confusion is with the transformation game is people just try and they just try really hard, but they don't realize that they're trying really hard in kind of like a, a sideways direction and they aren't really making any progress. They're just kind of paddling upstream and they're in the same spot and they, they always end up in the same spot or further down in the wrong direction. All right. So I want you to imagine a circle with four interconnected arrows. So the, the arrow at the top is going to be represented by we start a new program, all right? So we read a new book, we start uh, a, a boot camp, you uh, do one of my programs, you hire a personal trainer, anything. You start something new. That's the first arrow curving around the top to the right. Now, on the right side of the circle, another arrow kind of curving around towards the bottom, that is what I call the initial results phase. Any new stimulus, A, we're psyched about it because it's like the new thing and we have hope, right? We're like, okay, this could be my shot. This could be the time. And a new stimulus on the body creates results. So we're sweating more, we're eating a little bit cleaner, we're, we're you know, our metabolism is being shifted around a little bit. And, you know, maybe we're just burning more calories. So we see something initial and that gives us hope and it gets us fired up. We lose a few pounds, we get stronger, people make a few compliments. Uh, we have some momentum going. So the first two phases, great things are happening. We're like, sweet, this is awesome. The bottom of the circle is where the you know what hits the fan, all right? That's the, the arrow kind of curving around the bottom towards the left. This is what I call our life happens moment, right? When life happens, we as human beings kind of suck. We, that's, that's when the suck factor happens. You know, it can be anything. It can be so small. Any transition, the kids go back to school. The kids 
you know, or go to summer vacation, you get sick, your training partner gets sick, you're, you lose your personal trainer, they move away, you know, the gym closes down, your favorite podcaster quits podcasting and you aren't inspired by them anymore. Just the slightest change, uh, not even mentioning like the holiday season, vacations, those are the big ones, stress eating, not preparing, those life happens moments, we just get sideswiped by them and we aren't ready. Because we're out there floating, we're out there trying really, really hard, but we aren't equally thinking really, really hard about our transformation. We aren't thinking strategically. I'll get back to that in a second. So that's the third arrow in the circle. That's the bottom of the circle where it's starting to curve around and life happens. Life blindsides us and punches us in the face. All right. And the last arrow that connects the full circle to the left side is the crash and burn. We weren't ready for that life happens moment and we go back to where we started. And that's sad. Like I said, people assume this is just how it is and maybe someday I'll figure it out, but probably not. Maybe I'm just, this is just me. Maybe I'm just that person that's heavy. And every time we cycle through this, it gets harder and harder and harder. As you guys know, you know, I've got people that I I work with and I consult with and they're like, I've lost the same 20 pounds 10 times. You know, I've lost 200 pounds, 20 pounds, 10 times, uh, back and forth. But every time, it's harder physically because, you know, your metabolism gets gets messed up. Uh, your body gets confused. Your hormones get messed up. But also mentally, you just deplete, you know, obvious resources, time, money, effort. You're putting time, money, and effort into all this. But the worst two are the hope and the willpower. You start to deplete those. You start to lose hope. You start to think, oh, man, maybe I just can't do this. It's just not me. Maybe it's just too hard for me. And we start to give up. We lose that willpower. That's why it's harder every time because we know how hard it's been in the past. We already start thinking, oh, when's that, you know, when's it going to drop? When's that life happens moment going to hit me in the face and I'm going to crash and burn again? When's that going to happen? I, I coach people that are doing really well. I lost over 100 pounds and they're still thinking, when's that other shoe going to drop? When, when is it going to happen? And they're just talk, that negative self-talk. That loss of willpower, that loss of hope, it just eats away at them. All right, so today, so this is the first time you've ever heard me talk about this. You know, good. If it's the second, maybe it's the hundredth time, good. All right, you're meant to hear this today because today we break free of this. This isn't how it is. This isn't how the transformation game works. Uh, This isn't your destiny. All right, so we're going to reestablish a fresh supply of hope, a fresh supply of willpower, and we're going to take some of that time, money, and effort and move forward. All right. So hopefully you're getting fired up. All right. What I want to dive into next is that bottom part of the circle. All right. That's what I call a danger zone. That's what we have to be prepared for. And I'm going to give you another analogy. Some of you heard me talk about this before. Here comes the riding the bike, the hole in the road analogy, we'll call it. All right. So you have to imagine that you're on a long highway. You're at one end. Your goals are at the other end, far end. There's a giant hole in the middle of the road that represents that life happens moment, the danger zone. All right. So you have to walk straight down the road and get to the the other side uh, and hit that goal. But so we we go walk, we walk, 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 we fall right into the hole. We walk right into it. We climb out, we go back to where we started. We grab a bike, ride the bike right into the hole, climb out, go back to where we started. We grab a car, we drive a car right into the hole, climb out, go back to where we started. It doesn't matter what vehicle we use, the hole still exists. Until that hole is fixed, until the bridge is built, we never reach that goal. But this is what people do with their nutrition and their fitness day in and day out. They go, oh, paleo, this is my my shot. And then they go on a vacation and they gain all their weight back. And they don't go back to the gym for six months. And then they say, oh, keto, keto's the jam. They do keto, get some initial results. Then they go on a vacation and they gain it all back. They don't go back to the gym for six months. Maybe it's Weight Watchers. Okay. Or maybe it's CrossFit. Insert anything. And until we fix that, hey, I go on vacation and I always gain all my weight back and don't go back to the gym for six months, until we fix that hole in the road, no, pro- no program is going to work. No program will work as long as that danger zone exists and keeps sending you backwards. So people, they program hop. This is where people get confused because they don't understand this visual. But now, my friends, double-edged sword, you do understand it, all right? So you can do something about it, 
you can't rely on that excuse of, I'm just trying really hard. I don't know. I try all these programs, man, and nothing works for me. Now you, that you have the knowledge, you have to work for it. All right. No matter what program you do, you apply the concepts that I'm about to tell you, you will get better results 100% of the time. All right. I see it every single day. Uh, I get people plugged into just this simple thought process and it works. All right. So get fired up. So we have to fix the hole in the road. We've got to fix that life happens moment. I call them danger zones. The key to escaping the black hole of fitness doomed, the key to breaking free of this situation is thinking strategically about your transformation. All right, if you're a business owner out there, you're always aware of what could potentially put you out of business. We never think about our bodies that way. Why not? What could put your body out of business? People, think about it. All right, what is the thing that always puts your transformation out of business and sends you back to where you started? All right, with a, a, a swift kick in the butt and sends you back home, right? So the danger zone is the key. Until we fix the danger zone, no program is going to work long term, 100% of the time. I guarantee it. All right. So how do we do that? How do we fix the danger zone? How do we go about attacking this? That's what I'm going to give you next. Three important things that you need to consider with your danger zone. So let's use the vacation example again so that if you're that person I know a lot of you are out there that you you know do good you you're motivated by the by the vacation you know you want to look good out there in your speedo your your thong speedo did I just give you a visual no maybe not maybe not one that you wanted so you're out there you're doing good and then vacation hits and you crash and burn it's like an all you can eat drink and and contest you pack it on you gain everybody your weight back in that week and then the following weeks after when you don't get plugged back into a program. So that's your danger zone. Let's use that. So three things we need to be able to do. We, need, we have to be able to identify the danger zone. We have to be able to analyze the danger zone. And we have to be able to prepare in advance for the danger zone. Those are the three key steps. So first, we have to identify the danger zone. So I want you guys to think, if you are that person that has lost weight and regained multiple times, I'm not going to say that it's always the same danger zone, but there's usually like a handful, like a core group. And sometimes those are interconnected by things like stress or stress eating. So what I want you to do is think about each time that you've lost weight and regained it. Maybe it's boredom, you know, maybe you start feeling like you don't deserve to look and feel healthy or you start feeling guilty because you're spending more time at the gym than with your family, but just analyze what that life happens moment is with each of those situations. I want you to write them down. All right. That's identification. That's the first step in escaping the black hole of fitness doom is being able to identify that specific or those specific danger zones that have sent you spiraling downward uh, in the past. All right. So that's the first step. Step number one, identify. Second step is analyze dive deep on those danger zones and think, okay, what time of year? Who am I surrounded by? What were the stress levels? What were the circumstances? What was the timing like? What was my reaction like? Make notes. So the whole vacation thing, you think, all right, the vacation, I've identified that. Then we have to analyze it and really look at the exact situation where you say, okay, I'm motivated before vacation because I know that you know I'm gonna be on the beach and I want to look good. And I get kind of, I always do good with a goal like that, a physical goal. And so you understand that. But then you understand that it's like a transformation light switch syndrome that I talk about, where once you cross onto the beach of that vacation, the light switch goes off and it's party time. And it's kind of that, that built in mechanism of let's drink, let's eat as much as possible, all you can eat buffet. It's all inclusive, baby. I got to take advantage of that, earn, you know, make that, that dollar worth it. So that's part of the analysis. And we understand that that mindset is what you're taking into the vacation, making the most of it, you know, relax, got to cut back, cut loose, and just enjoy myself for a little bit. And then we have to understand what happens after as the downward spiral continues, where you don't get back into your, your good habits. You tell yourself you will, but you don't. And this happens every time. And you go back home. You kind of float. You're like, oh, I'm going to start trying to clean up. I'm going to give myself a couple of weeks. But all those habits, you know, you're still not eating clean. You haven't been reporting in at your gym like you should have. You've been missing those classes. Maybe you canceled a couple of personal training sessions or you stopped doing your walks at work with your friends. 
And, you know, these are all really key components. You have to make as many notes as possible in that analysis phase. So I identify, we analyze. The third key step to escaping the black hole of fitness doom is being able to pre-plan, to plan ahead for the danger zones. You need that strategy. It's like the, the break the glass in case of emergency strategy. All right. And you just, just by thinking ahead, all right, just by taking the time that you've already taken here, just in our little discussion here, just by taking the time to think this through, you're already giving yourself a huge advantage because most people just cover their eyes and dive in and hope for the best. And how is that working for you? <laughs> you know, how's that working for you, my friends? Uh, probably not the best unless you have like a rock in metabol- you know, metabolism and you're 18 years old and you can eat whatever you want, then you'll be fine. Um, but most of my audience doesn't fit that description. So we have to plan ahead for and using our example. And again, okay, let me, let me back up one step. When we plan ahead for, we cannot put pressure on ourselves to completely solve it in this one swoop. All right, that, that next vacation that you go on, do not expect, well, I've thought ahead of this, I've got my action step, and I expect it to be perfect. I'm actually going to lose weight this time on vacation. We got to bridge the gap. But think about it like cycles. So instead of going through that black hole of fitness doom, we go through a cycle of the three steps. You know, We identify, analyze, and plan ahead for that danger zone, and we get a little bit better. And then the next time it comes up, we do the three steps again. Identify, analyze plan ahead for boom and we get a little bit better a little bit better a little bit better and then all of a sudden it's not a danger zone anymore and you know what it may seem like adam this is gonna be a lot harder than you're making it sound yes it is but i see people do this all the time my coaching clients i have a tool called the transformation battle plan workbook uh it's a free tool you can download it on the website millionpoundmission.com it's right there get it it's my best thing uh it's not a little one page PDF. It's like 30 pages. It's like intense. It's not 30 pages, probably like 14, but you're going to use some ink. All right. Uh, when you print that sucker out, but it's worth it. Every 28 days I have my clients do this and they have to report back to me. And the cool thing is there's a danger zone analysis section where we look ahead 28 days and we make action steps to plan ahead for each danger zone that exists on that 28 day calendar. And the neat thing is they start to disappear. And as we go through the cycle, you know, six months down the road, people are like, you know what? I really don't feel like I have that many danger zones. I don't have any danger zones this month. Is that weird? I'm like, it's called winning. So it works. Like this really, really works. I see it happen every day, every week. All right. So trust it. So the workbook that I mentioned, this is the tool that I would recommend for this whole analysis, uh, the, the identification, the analysis, and the planning ahead for. Best thing, it's free. I should charge for it. People tell me all the time I should charge for it, but I don't. I just want you guys to have it and use it, all right? Uh, Okay, so example with our vacation danger zone. So we have to have, we just want something in our pocket that sets us up for a better rate of success. So in the vacation example, what I always talk about, you know, this is huge. I mean, so many people ask me about vacations. They really, really struggle with this. So I say, here's the deal. The... What happens before vacation and after vacation? I'm more concerned with that. And they're like, mind blown. What? Uh, Does this mean I can eat as much as I want? Not necessarily. I want you to be conscious. I want you to be mindful. But I do want you to enjoy yourself. Like, I want you to enjoy the vacation, not be stressed about, like, how many carrot sticks you brought with you. All right? Uh, I want you to enjoy. But it's moderation. It's not, let's see how much alcohol I can put down this time. Let's see how many donuts I can eat at breakfast every day this week. Because is that really enjoying a vacation? If that's needed to enjoy a vacation, there are other issues that we need to talk about. It's called addiction, all right? So with the vacation, what I say is, first step, let's map out everything on the back end of the vacation so that you are set up to succeed. All you have to do is just walk into a plan when you get back to home base. All right, so once you get back home, you already know ahead of time what nutrition plan you're on. You've booked all your workouts, you know you've scheduled when you're going to be grocery shopping. Uh, maybe you've dialed into Amazon, had things delivered, and they are there waiting for you. All right? But you just walk right into a plan. If you can do that, you're going to win. Where people really screw up on vacations is that they don't get back to their plan for days, weeks, months, 
and then the downward spiral just eats him up. And then it's even harder to get motivated to get back into high gear again. And then, uh oh, boop, there's another vacation, another vacation right, right on the next doorstep. And it, we repeat that cycle. So that's what I would do with the vacation example is just have that one little thing, uh, you know, stress eating. Let's use that. People ask me about, you know, nighttime snacking. And I say, you know, with any danger zone, if we can create a binary decision, a I'm going to do thing A or thing B. All right. If we can create a binary decision, that gives us an advantage. And then we just have to get good and just win the battle of that of those micro decisions and do more good decisions than bad decisions, and we win. So an example with stress eating is a lot of times people don't prep food. They aren't thinking ahead, and re they don't realize that stress eating is their danger zone. So again, you are now armed with this knowledge, and they don't think ahead. They don't plan ahead, and they are hungry at night. They get home from work. They are stressed, and they are hungry. The ultimate combination for screw it, I'm eating ice cream, right? So I see it all the time, you know? Um, I've even fallen victim to it a few times in my life back in the, the, heavy, the, the, the heavy dude days, not the, the previously heavy dude days. So you got to think, what's the danger zone? What's the step? How do I set myself up for success here? And with the, you know, the binary decision that we want to create, we think, okay, if, I, if I'm not prepared, we're stressed, we're hungry, and we're in that moment of decision, and it's not a binary decision, it is, well, option A is I eat the ice cream, or there's option B, which is eat healthy, but that's not really the option. It's like, okay, what healthy thing am I going to eat, and where do I, do I have the stuff, and I have to cook it, and there's like a, three or four layers of that decision, and we're screwing ourselves over, right? We're making it hard to win that decision. So by thinking ahead and pre-planning and knowing, you know what, I know that every Thursday night I'm stressed. It's a long day. We do this meeting thing at work or whatever, you know, um, and I come home, I'm stressed out and I, I cheat on my diet. I blow my diet and then I feel guilty about it. And then the weekend starts and I cheat all weekend. So it's like the first spark that ignites that fire of cheating. So we know that that's an issue. So let's create that binary decision. Let's know that. I usually grocery shop, so I'm kind of running low on groceries. So I'm going to do a, a uh, like a click list where you pick up the groceries on Wednesday. Wednesday night, I'm throwing some stuff into a crock pot so that it's ready on Thursday morning. Or you can throw stuff in the crock pot on Thursday morning so it's ready on Thursday night. That might even be better so you like smell it when you get home. You're like, all I have to do is just dish up this healthy stuff. You know, it's binary decision now. The healthy food is made. So it's eat healthy food or eat bad food. That's the decision. It's not cook it and figure it out and all that other, all those other things, that, all those other layers that I talked about a second ago. So that's how we win. And we won't win every time. So don't put that kind of pressure on yourself. All right. But we win more than we lose. Then we start gaining momentum. The more momentum we have, the easier it is to make that decision that helps us win. All right. So we're hopefully this is all starting to kind of unravel a little bit. And you're like, damn, I can actually do this. The PhD speaks the truth. Hashtag the PhD speaks the truth. Use that on Instagram. <laughs> Let's see. So that's how you escape the black hole of fitness doom. And in a, in a later episode, um, I'm going to take this another level deeper and talk about your transformation timeline, and how this all fits into that, because it's... Uh, you know, I want to make sure that you are prepared for what happens when you do break loose of this because it's called you're out of your comfort zone and you have to be ready for that. And that'll be coming in an upcoming episode uh, on the next, uh, it won't be the next edition, but it'll be uh, down the road a little bit here. Uh, as you know, we're getting a little goofy in September. I'm only doing one episode a week so I can get my uh, preparation on for my eight marathons in eight days challenge, walking over 200 miles in eight days here coming up soon. Uh, I'll need you guys to cheer me on with that and various other things I've got going on. But I hope that this painted a picture for you. I want you to spend some time on this. Download the Battle Plan Workbook, millionpoundmission.com. Get that and start working on those danger zones. And like I said, you have to take pressure off of yourself and just think about analyzing this. All right? That's the, the real key is just stepping back and saying, okay, what is the real issue here? It's not the program. It's the hole in the road. So let's fix that hole in the road 
and we can move forward. All right, so quick recap, Black Hole Fitness Doom. Now that you are aware of it and you know how to escape it, it's time to get into action about that. All right, so we have to put what we have learned with this episode, put it into action, and that, my friends, is how we get out there and own it. Every meal, every workout, every day, I will see you on the next episode. Hey, thanks for hanging around and listening to what I have to say about this brand new program that I'm calling the Million Pound Mission Transformation Reboot. I'm psyched about this. We are launching a couple, at least one, maybe a couple test groups in September. If you want to be a part of that, go to millionpoundmission.com and you'll see some info there. Uh, But I feel like this is one of my best ways to help you escape the black hole of fitness doom that we talked about in the episode today because... This is exactly what we're focused on, right? We're not trying to learn any brand new diet. We're not trying to learn any brand new exercise regimen. It is 100% strategy, momentum, support, and accountability. All right, so there's two phases to this program. And the first phase is it's like an incubator. I'm launching this in small pods, these groups that will be kind of linked together throughout their transformation journey. We, it's, I'm calling it a mini mastermind. So it's going to be a short burst where we're working together in this small group. I've got some coursework for you to do. I've got an online course built into this. We dive deep in that transformation battle plan workbook that I talked about. You have a masterfully crafted 28-day plan by the end of the mini mastermind. And you're going to be on fire as we kind of birth you into the larger group where everybody's going to be interacting. We're going to do group challenges, support, uh, live chats, all of that. And it's all about maintaining momentum consistent forward momentum is the key Uh, we're there for support we're there to to catch you if you fall we're we're a major accountability anchor point so i'm psyched about this because i see so many people just get swallowed alive by the black hole of fitness doom and like i talked about in today's episode it's time for that to stop it's time for us to break free of it move forward and just understand how to do that. And I'm going to be there to support you every step of the way, my friends. So I'm fired up. Head on over to millionpoundmission.com and check it out. All right, now hold on just one second before you take off. Have we gotten connected yet? Have we gotten social yet? Uh, I am loving over the last few months... You guys have been reaching out to me. We've been connecting and people have been sending me messages like, wow, you replied to my email or you replied to my Instagram message or wow, I I got to ask you questions when you went live in your Facebook group or on Instagram. And that's like my main form of compensation right now. As you all know, I'm making like $4 a month from my podcast. So my main form of compensation is, is connecting with you guys, actually helping you and knowing that my message is connecting. So I want you to hit me up. I want you to follow me on Instagram at Million Pound Mission or join my free Facebook group by going to DefeatTheCheat.com and uh, join that rowdy crew. Those are the main two areas that I connect with people on social, Instagram at Million Pound Mission and my Facebook group, DefeatTheCheat.com. That just reroutes you to be able to join the Facebook group. Um, But I love to connect. So let's get connected. It's not just you listening, me and your earbuds. It's about going a little bit deeper so I can actually help you out. All right, that's what I'm here to do. And I look forward to connecting, my friends. Talk to you soon.